Hello and welcome to today's golden GIMP tutorial. I'm going to show you how to transform anything into a golden nugget. It's going to be awesome. So we have two free images and a free font that we're going to use for this particular design. So go ahead and locate those in the resources, download them, and then you can use them to follow along with and practice what you learn. So if you're ready to master this golden GIMP effect, let's do it. All right, I'm going to start off by creating a new document with command or control plus the letter N. And these are the dimensions that I'm going to use with a resolution of 72. And I want to come down here and fill in with the foreground color, which is set to black. So go ahead and do that and click OK. And then locate the file that you downloaded for this project. Click on the file and drag it over your GIMP interface and it will automatically be added as a new layer. Now the image right now is a little bit too large. So let's make this image smaller with our scale tool. So shift plus S to activate the scale tool. You're going to hold down your control key and click on a corner and drag in and that resizes the image from center. So we're going to make it smaller than the canvas. So right around there, I have it at 2949 for the width. It doesn't have to be perfect click scale and then go ahead and zoom in so you can see the car a little bit better because what we need to do next is remove the background. We have a lot of selection tools that we can use to select the background width to remove it. Now for this project, I'm going to use this selection tool right here, the free select tool. So with this tool, we're going to make a rough selection. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to use another tool to refine our selection once we have the initial done. So I'm just going to draw around the car like this and get as close as I can to the edge without actually touching it. Now we need to complete the selection by going back to the beginning until we see this yellow circle. Once you see that, release your mouse button and the initial selection is created. So right now the car is being selected. So to fine tune our selection so that the selection is along the edge of the car, we're going to use the quick mask mode, which can be activated with shift plus Q or come down here and click on this icon to turn the quick mask mode on. So the red overlay represents the image not being selected. So we want to fine tune our selection so that it's around the car or the edge of the car a lot tighter. And we need to use our paintbrush tool to do that. So grab that with the letter P. And then over here, you want to make sure that you have black and white set for the foreground and background colors. Just click on this icon right here to switch the colors. So when you paint with black, you're actually adding the red overlay or removing the selection. So just get in real tight along the car like this with the black color selected. If you come over here and make a mistake, you can actually paint with white. So come over here and swap the colors by clicking on these double arrows, and then you can remove that red overlay where it shouldn't be. Now, personally, I prefer to use a keyboard shortcut, which is the letter X, which will automatically swap the colors every time I press X. So that just makes it a little bit easier because I can work on my image from the canvas here. And then with the keyboard shortcut, I can switch back and forth between black and white to make the adjustments that I need for the particular edit. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue painting around the edge of the car right here. And I'm going to do a very quick job. I'm not going to make this perfect because I just want to show you how to get this done. And you can spend a little bit more time getting it perfect if you like. Now real quick, I may want to switch back and forth between a smaller and larger brush as well, which we can do from over here in the tool options. But again, I prefer to use my keyboard shortcuts, which is the bracket keys. So the right bracket key will make the brush larger. The left bracket key will make it smaller. All right, once you've completed the update to the selection, you need to get out of quick mask mode with shift plus Q 
or click on this icon down here again, and then your selection is updated. Now, as I mentioned, the car is selected and we want to remove the background. So we're going to come up here to select and click on invert to invert the selection. Then we're going to come over here and click here to add a white layer mask. Go ahead and click add. We're going to set the background color to black. Then hit delete or your backspace key and boom, your background is removed. All right, let's go up to select and select none to deselect. All right, so as you can see, I didn't do a very good job with my selection process. That's fine. If you didn't either, that's okay as well. You can go ahead and continue on, or if you want to fine tune your selection, you can paint with black in that area with your layer mask to continue removing the background as needed. So let's not spend a lot of time on that. Let's go ahead and continue on to the next step, which is duplicating our layer. I'm going to double click on the layer name here so I can rename it to original. That way we can work non-destructively. If we make a mistake or we're not happy with the results, we can always come back to this original layer versus starting over from scratch and making that selection again to remove the background. Let's go ahead and turn this layer off because we don't need it. And then we're going to come up here and select this layer, right click on it and select apply layer mask. So we can't make any more edits to this particular layer via the layer mask. So that's why it's important to have an original in case you do need to go back. All right. So now we're going to begin the transformation process into a golden nugget. So the first thing we need to do is convert it to black and white. So let's go up to colors desaturate and select desaturate and then click OK. Now the reason why we need to convert it to black and white is we are going to be adding a yellow or golden color to the image and it's not going to work as well with a full color image. Yes, you can choose that particular color and change the color, but there's millions of colors inside of this car and it's not going to have that same yellow golden effect or the color versus applying it to a black and white image. All right, so we're now going to come over here and duplicate this layer. And the reason why is the next color transformation is going to remove some of the detail in the image. And by having the original image as a duplicate, we can bring back some of that detail. So make sure you have your top layer selected here. Go to colors and select invert, which is right here. So what invert is doing is it's changing the tonal values of the image. So the black tones are now brighter, as you can see in the tire, and the lighter colors are now darker. So this helps enhance the texture of the image and transform it from ordinary to a golden nugget. You can skip this step, but it's not going to have the same look of a golden nugget because it's going to look more like a color overlay than a golden nugget. Now, as you can see, we lost some detail in the darker areas here and we want to bring some of that back. So we're going to come up here to the mode options here and we're going to select difference and that blends in this layer with the layer below and adds back some and adds back some more of that detail. All right, we don't need both layers now, so we're going to right click on this top layer and select merge down. Now you can repeat these steps if you want to enhance the texture of the car itself, but I prefer to add contrast. So there's a couple different ways you can add contrast. One is with the levels tool and another is with the curves tool. I prefer the curves tool. So let's go up to colors and select curves. So from here we can see in the curves dialog window, we have a histogram in the back which represents the tonal ranges of the image. And then we have this linear line that intersects from the bottom left to the top right. And this represents the different points of the tonal range that you can manipulate to increase the contrast. So down here we have our blacks and shadows. Over here we have our white points and our highlights. In the middle, it's more of the exposure. 
So what I'm going to do is create what is known as an S-curve. So we're going to add some contrast in the blacks and some in the whites. So we're going to come over here and click and drag down. And you can see the image is getting darker in some spots. If we come over here and click and drag up, we are now brightening parts of the image. So the whites and the highlights are becoming brighter. The black points and the shadows are becoming darker. And we have what looks like an S. So this adds more contrast. The more you adjust this, the more detail you're going to lose because you begin clipping data. So I wouldn't increase this too much. So I'm gonna create a flat S like this. Go ahead and click OK. All right, so the next step is colorizing our car to create a golden nugget. So we're going to go up to Colors and select Colorize. And then we're going to grab our hue slider here and drag it to the left to get our yellow golden color. Now you can click on this color box right here and pick your color from here as well. And that's helpful if you have a specific hexadecimal number that represents a specific color that you want. I think I'm going to go a little bit darker, so maybe something like that. So if you want to use the same color, just type in this information in this box, click OK, OK again, and boom, you have your golden nugget. How cool is that? I love it. All right, so before we go, I want to show you how I created a glowing car and how I added these other effects. So let's go ahead and grab the other image we have for this project and add that first. I'm going to go ahead and grab this image layer here and drag it down below the other ones. And then I'm going to drop the opacity down to around five or lower. And it kind of looks like sparks are coming off of the golden nugget. Pretty cool. All right. So the next thing I want to do is add a box around the car just to add another graphic element. So let's create a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and increase this a little bit. Let's go ahead and create a new layer by clicking right there, clicking stroke, and then we're going to grab our rectangle select tool and we're going to create a shape around the car. Now let's go over to our foreground color swatch here and click on your eyedropper tool here and click on a color in the car you want to use. Go ahead and click OK. Let's go up to Edit and select Stroke Selection. We're going to set the line width to 12. Click Stroke and that adds your stroke. Can't see it right now because we need to deselect first by going up to Select and clicking on None. That's a little bit too dark for me, so I'm going to drop the opacity down to around 25. So maybe something like that. And then I'm going to grab my text tool with the letter T. And let's go inside our tool options here to make our selections from here. I'm using a font called Goldstone Weight equals 101. I'm not quite sure why they named it that way, but that's the font that I want to use. For the color, I'm going to come over here to my original project and select that color from here. Okay, so this is the hexadecimal number right there for that color. And then for the size, I think we need to do, let's try 125. Let's go ahead and add our content here. I think the font size is too small, so I'm going to double click to select all the content and I'm going to change the font size to 300. Click your tab key to resize it. That looks pretty good. So let's hit our escape key to deactivate the text tool. I'm going to grab my move tool with the letter M and I'm just going to move it up right here. All right, let's grab our alignment tool with the letter Q. And then we need to tell GIMP which layer needs to be aligned. It's not enough just to have the layer selected. We have to activate the layer to be aligned. So what we need to do is click on the inside of the layer boundary here, but the only problem is it's not selecting that layer. It's actually selecting this car image here. And I know that because of these four squares right here. So these four squares should be on the inside of this layer boundary, and that's the visual cue that layer has been activated to be aligned. So to fix that, we need to turn off our layer here at the top 
and then we can click on the inside of this layer boundary to select it and then in tool options go to relative to set first item click on this icon to align to the center of the target all right let's turn our car back on let's select it and let's increase the layer boundary by going up to layer selecting layer to image size this way any edits that we apply now are not confined to that particular layer boundary or that smaller layer boundary we had before because what we want to do is create a glowing effect around the car so we're going to come over here and duplicate that layer and i'm going to double click here to rename it glow let's call this one golden car then let's select our glow layer we're going to go up to filters blur gaussian blur and then we're going to increase the x and the y to i don't know what do you think maybe maybe a little bit more all right something like that that's pretty intense if you want you could lower the opacity of that glow by lowering the opacity I think I'm going to because it looks a little bit too intense right now. So there you go, your golden nugget car. All right, real quick before you leave, I have a quick question for you. Is there anything else you want to learn about GIMP? If so, leave a comment below this video, whether it's about editing, retouching, or designing in GIMP, I'll create a video tutorial just for you. Also, one more thing before you leave, please like this particular video. It helps support the video and the channel overall. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.